Let's take some time to get familiar with the Power Automate Desktop Design Console. We'll start with the Actions pane here on the left. You will find that there are over 370 actions at your disposal. I would recommend taking some time to drill through each one of the categories to get an idea of what you can do with Power Automate Desktop. Once you become more familiar with the actions, you'll be able to search for them instead of drilling down through each category. Let's continue exploring the design console by bringing an action into our flow. I'm going to type dialog and drag this into our main action pane. You'll see a window appears and allows you to enter several parameters and also exports some variables. So we'll give it a title and input a dialog message. You have other options like adding a default value or input type where you can have a single line, a password, which will mask the password or have a multi-line entry. And you'll notice that some variables will be produced. So the first one here by default is user input. And if you want, you can change this. And also for button press, it'll capture the button that is pressed after we enter something into the dialog box. So I'll click save here and now I'll give this a quick run. So the dialog box will appear. We'll enter our response, click on OK. And now you can see over on the right hand side in our variables pane that we have two flow variables, button pressed with the value containing OK and how's your day with the text containing great. You will find the UI elements repository beneath the variables. Here you'll notice that we haven't captured any selectors yet, so this will be blank. You have two options to capture selectors. You can click on add UI element, which will initiate the UI spy, or you can bring a UI action into your process and initiate the UI spy in that way. So I'll bring click UI element into the window and I'll select on this drop down. If we had any selectors, you would see the list here to be able to select from, or you also have the option to add a new UI element. So I'll click this, and now you'll see that our UI spy has been activated. I have a desktop application open up in the background, and as you can see, as I hover over the elements, they're being traced, and this allows you to capture them. So we'll click on, let's say, this invoices, button and I'll hold down control and left click. And as you can see here, it's captured our control and I'll click on done. And now you can see there's an image of the control and we have the selector here. So I'll click on save. And if you want to modify the selector as you get more advanced, you can double click or edit selector and then you have the selector build their window here where you can go through and modify this as you please. In addition to UI elements, you can also capture images to move your mouse to and send clicks or to use in conditional statements like if image appears. Click on capture new image to initiate the image spy and trace over an element on your desktop or web application. We'll give this image a name, click on OK, and now you see that we have one image in our repository. I'll move my mouse over to the search pane in the actions category, and type image to find an action that we can use to support an image captured in our repository. Drag this into our flow, click on this image button, select the info element that we captured, add, and we want to send a mouse click after it's identified and I'll click save. So if you want to test this out, I will drag display input dialog to the bottom. Since we already tried that out, I will add a breakpoint here so that it only executes actions one and two. And then we will give it a run. And what you'll see is that the application will be brought to the foreground. We'll click the first UI element that we identified and then the info button will be pressed. Furthermore, we'll take a look at some of the other options that you have in the designer. You have the option to save your process, 
run as we have. You can run next action. Once you have placed the breakpoint, then you can click on this to proceed with your execution. We have the option for web recorders so that you can record web macros. So you click on this and you have the option to select the browser that you want to automate and then continue through your process and it'll record the steps. Similarly, the same option appears for a desktop recorder. You can search for values within inside of your flow. And I encourage you now to take some time since you have a broad familiarity and begin automating your first process. Thank you.